Good morning, I'm Chris. And I'm Janine. Welcome to the Blue Fiber Tree. Yay! Today we're gonna just do a quick coffee and chat mm -hmm. before our how-to video. Yes. Um, Janine's gonna run through the schedule and then we'll talk a little bit about the classes that she's bringing up. And then the how-to video today is learning how to weave after you've warped your rigid heddle, which we did a couple months ago. Yeah, look at that. Part two. <laughs> Part two, we're gonna show you how to do it and finish it. Absolutely. Get it off of there. Absolutely. All right, so schedule. So today, um, wow, we're already at the 22nd. 22 days has gone by really fast. It has, it has. And it's been a whirlwind in here, I'm just saying. It so has. anyway, I get to teach a class. Yay. So Wednesday. About time you got busy. <laughs> Wednesday the 25th, I'm going to show you how to needle felt this cute little heart that you can hang, decorate it however you want. You can put words on it if you want to. And we're going, I'm going to show you how you can take fiber and a cookie cutter and you put the fiber in the cookie cutter and you felt it and you get your heart. So this is going to be fun, and that's going to go boom. I can do a whole lot of whole things with lot cookie of things. cutters. Absolutely. And the beauty of it is we have over 40 colors of fiber so that you can do anything you want. And we're running a little low yes, on we certain are. colors. i got to get my butt to the barn. Which means people like what they see over there. That makes me happy. Yeah. Um, on the 26th, we have Beginner's Tapestry. Did you grab it? Oh. <laughs> I thought she was grabbing it. No, you were over there. <laughs> That's where you had it, and then you turned around. Beginner's Tapestry. <laughs> I can go get it while you talk. You can. I'll be right back, guys. She's going to go get it. Uh, it's the first Beginner's Tapestry of the new year, and I know it's been a while since we've done Beginner's Tapestry, and so this is the first time Chris is teaching this one, and she's actually, the sample that she's going to show you is the one that I did a couple years ago. So yeah, so, and she's gonna teach you all kinds of techniques on how to warp and then actually start weaving your project. Now, Absolutely. I will tell you, you don't need to purchase a frame anymore. No. Um, we have smaller ones that we're gonna let you use because you're learning a technique. And then if you really love it, you can buy the larger one that I keep in stock here from Ashford. Absolutely. And then you can make your own. Yeah, we just decided it's a large, it's a, it's an investment. And if yeah. you're not ready for the investment because you don't know if you like it. And you know, the smaller looms are about this big. So at least like you get a smaller finished product when you're done, but we actually will have time to finish what you start in class where with the yeah. larger looms, it's really hard to get it done in yeah. a few hours. So we'll so. have the tools you need, but yep. you need to bring all your own yarns. Yeah, you get to bring um, whatever yarns you have in your stash that you're like, oh, this is left over from that project. This is left over from that project. And what and size? All sizes. Thinner yarns, thicker yarns. Because you can always hold more than one together. Yes. And it's really cool. So Absolutely. chunky, um, uh, what's the word I want to use? Textured yarns that are novelty yarns. Yeah. And even hand spun, if you're a spinner, oh. hand spun yarns are fun hand as stuff. well. Absolutely. And I have um, a little bin somewhere. My part of it might even still be here from the from when we were doing that round thing that Kathy taught with the <laughs> pulling of the stuff through that the, I keep. The rug hooking. Yeah, like the rug hooking. I have a bunch of little balls of you art do. yarn. And I'm going to bring those to the class so that people that don't have yarns that are that thick, right, they'll get to use some of those. So you can see how the specialty yarns work. Yeah. And if you're not a knitter or a crocheter and you don't have any leftover yarns, I've got a rack full for you. Um, people donate leftover yarns. Um, and I have bags of just small balls of different colors. Yeah. And one of those would do your project. Yeah. Like they're and like the six, ten dollars at the most. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. So if you forget your yarn, you have an option. Absolutely. Then basic knots macrame. All right. Later that evening at 530, the same day yeah. on the 26th. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Oh, Just, same day as. Oh. Same day as you have a double thing that day. You have 10 to 1 
and then 5.30 to 7.30 is basic knots. Oh, man, I'm going to be busy. You're going to be busy. Okay, so with the basic knots, um, we have two different beginner's classes for people that want to learn the macrame knots. We have the actual full beginner's macrame, which is, which is where we make this actual wall hanging where you take home. In the basic knots, you will learn all the knots that are in this, but we don't actually make a project. Um, and the reason we made that is because there are people that want to go down the rabbit hole of macro weaving, mm -hmm. but they really don't want to make macrame projects. Right. Or they like some of the advanced classes, like when we did the macrame bowl, but they really didn't want to make a wall hanging. That's just right. not their gig. And it, really, <coughs> the basic me. knots macrame, you're going to learn all those same knots. Um, and you're just, you need to buy a skein of the practice cording. Yep. Um, that well run. And a dowel rod, and um, the thing is, you um, you reuse it. You use it over and over again. That stuff is pretty durable, and yeah. that's what it's the practice cording that we sell here in the store. Yep. It's like seven dollars a skein or five dollar, whatever the heck it is, and it's really easy. I think it's five ninety nine. I don't know. We're doing great this morning. We're doing really well. Thank you, Mother um, Nature. We're not awake yet. Yeah, it's rainy. It's rainy and miserable <laughs> today. So the. Th what you it's so you just learn those knots and you can practice them over and over and over again mm -hmm. and which is chris's thing you need to practice 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 i'm big on practicing because if you're going to do anything after right. and you don't know your knots you're going to come to an advanced class or you're going to come to the macro weave class and you're going to be like i don't know how to do a square knot well can you remind me how to do a square knot and i can but then we lose time in the class right and it that we did one of those the macro weave, the beginner's one, and just to do the frame part without even any weaving, it took the entire, was that five hours? It was five hours. It was five hours. And and really, and I'm going to be very honest, all I planned in that class was the framework, was to help you get your framework done because everybody's going to have a little different idea of the way they want their piece mm -hmm. to flow. So we talk a little bit about design work yeah. while we're doing it. Um, and that takes time because some people... Some people can look at a picture, you know, look at a blank area, and they can picture something. That was you. And some people look at it and go, oh, I don't even know where to begin, and they get overwhelmed. That's me. <laughs> so, you know, I take you through how to get from that blank canvas into a framework that you can then go back and weave. And if you've taken tapestry, yeah, then you are where you need to be for macrame. Right. You know, you need to understand the basics of some form of weaving to be able to do the macro weave anyway. Mm -hmm. Yep. So it's the basic knots is a nice starter place for that. And for those of you who are local that haven't been in the store for a while yeah. and you haven't seen like macro weave pieces, um, when you walk in through the first set of doors on the left in the window. That's the right. Oh, it's the right. The other left. Wow. The other left. Sorry. Oh my God. <laughs> she pointed the right way. I did. My, I <laughs> I'm chasing my tail this morning, but there's a larger piece that I did in creams and grays. That's a macro weave project. Yep. So it would give you an understanding of like, oh, okay. And you don't have to make things that big. You can make things smaller mm -hmm. and in any sizes. But the thing that I like about the macro weaving is that you can use almost anything that you can weave with. Ribbons, fabrics, yarns, roving, yep. beads. The, the it's endless what it's, you can use it's a it's a crafter's dream really i mean you, you want to talk about anything. busting a stash oh yeah ha. yep we're good what's next next is the last saturday of month which is january 28th we have a new spinning thing that we're going to be doing and it is called skill building techniques for spinners and that's from 11 to 3 and basically what that is, is Chris is going to help you work through the things that you have learned in previous classes, workshops, yes. and you're struggling with. You just need some more attention with, you know, with me. I can do a single. When I go to ply it, that's when I ruin my yarn. So she's she gonna, needs to come take my class. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be a private one when the store's closed. Yeah. <laughs> It's yeah. the only way I'm going to be able to do it. Probably. Um, so if you're doing core spinning or mm -hmm. you, you know, you've learned these other techniques, 
and you're still struggling, there's something that's not clicking, that's what this one is for. So yeah. do you want to expand on that, any? Yeah, really, it's just so I have Nancy. I love you, babe. I'm going to use you as an example. <laughs> um, one of our friends, Nancy, she has bad hands like mm -hmm. I do. And she had gotten away from spinning a little bit because of her hands right. and everything that was going on in her life. And she desperately wanted to come back to it. So she had a surgery and she was like, you know, I don't, I tried. I don't think I'm ever going to be able to spin again. So we actually had her come and take like part two of our beginner spinning session just to kind of get her hands back in the way that they needed to be. And then after that, she came and she took my core class. And I can almost guarantee you, Miss Nancy's coming back for the skill builders because she's already texted me and she was like, so when are you going to be in the shop again? She goes, I have some questions for you. And sometimes it's a matter of, okay, we took core. Okay, I got it, but I forgot part of what I learned. Mm -hmm. Or I I can't get this, this to go on my core. I don't know what's going yeah. on or I can't get it smooth. And, and it's, I'm here to help you with, sounds weird, but hand position, mm -hmm. body position, you know, how you hold things when you spin, it's so important. You actually went through that process of trying to find a different way to hold your fibers because of your hands. I couldn't do thick and thin for the longest time right. because there's a pulling sensation a that twist. you do. There's a twist and a pull and my wrists do not twist and pull. Yep. So I have to do thick and thin in a different way. But Right. So this beats having to take that core class over again like me because you've already you've done it you you understand you just need how enforcement right yeah and we're gonna try and do the skill building for spinners probably I'd like to do it every other month mm -hmm. is my goal um, if I get a large group of people that are like when is that class when it oh my god I don't want to wait till then I'll throw it on the book somewhere yeah and get a few of you in I don't mind doing that at all um, more than anything, I want to see our spinners succeed. Yes. Because what I find is when some of the spinners get frustrated, they step away from it, and then you own all this fiber, you own this wheel, and they sit there and they become your dust collector, like our um, ellipticals and our bikes <laughs> at home that we don't use and our yes. treadmills that become the hanger for all the extra coats. <laughs> I don't know who does that. I, oh, I, I don't, don't know. know who does who does that? I don't know. But, um, you know, mine so actually got moved to another room because it was in the way. <laughs> oh, boy. So, no, I want to see our spinners succeed. But what I'd also like to do is I'd like to see, this is another step in my goal of getting our spinners back to being a family yeah. that gathers. Because we do have the two Monday nights, the second and fourth Monday of the month from five to eight. And we are struggling to get them back. It's very slow, and I don't know why. Um, but this and the following weekend on Saturday, oh, yes. February 4th, is our one-day spin-in that we have been doing for a couple of years now. It's from 9 to 5. You just come and you it's hang so out. Fun. It's a one-day version of the two-day retreat that we do in July. Yep. And yep. you just, 9 to 5. Bring your yep. wheel, hang out. We're going to be here all day. Yep. And you get to practice more for Absolutely. a longer period of time. And I'm here and I can help. And what else were you going to do that day? Um, I'm teaching thick and thin. There you go. I'm going to demonstrate thick and thin. And anybody that wants to give it a shot, be more than happy to help you get started. Um, now, oddly, in conjunction with that, you'll probably get taught applying technique because oh. if you're going to apply thick and thin, the most beautiful way to apply it is to spiral apply it. Mm. Yeah. So you might actually get to learn two things that day, which is fine. Which is fine. Um, it's just a really fun, like thick and thin makes the most beautiful garments. Like yeah. when you're doing scarves and hats and, oh my God, it just, it really does. Mm -hmm. I have a vest that I made that is all alpaca, so it tends to get a little bit long as the day goes. <laughs> um, but it was all thick and thin. It was some yeah. of the first thick and thins that I ever did. Right. And, you know, let's go back to, like, the tapestry weaving. Um, for the anyone who does beginner spinning, I had 
bags of yarns that I learned at all or that I created at all those weekends and the yep. new techniques that I learned. And it's like every time I open a box, I'm like, well, where did this come from? I thought I had them all together. <laughs> but I'm going to start putting those into my weavings because you should. why not? You should. They they put such character yeah. into, into tapestry, macro weave, weave, rigid heddle weaving. Yeah. All of it. Yep. All of it. So And it adds that just that little personal touch. Mm -hmm. But if you're making something boho, funky, whatever, those are the things that help get you that that, that look. you're looking yeah. for. Yeah. Absolutely. So absolutely. That's it for the calendar. I did go into February for the one day spin in just because I want to give people plenty of time. Oh, yeah. Any of these workshops, please call to sign up. It's the only way you can get on the calendar unless you um, email me and right. then I will confirm back to you that you're on there. Right. Um, it's just our way of making sure that we have plenty of the materials that we need for you. Especially so that you those macrame classes. Yes. Because I got to cut cords for the kits. <laughs> <laughs> and please, God, don't make me cut 19,000 things of cords and then nobody show up. Because it takes well, forever to cut cords for macrame. Well, it's not. It's okay, not that. You don't I'm cut just the cords playing. for that. And the other one's just a skein that you buy off the shelf. I'm fine with you doing the beginners. like. But when we're doing projects and stuff like that. Specific I'm things she has to cut. things, I'm cutting the cords for those. Yep. It reminds so. me of making the angel kits. Oh, yes. Those were. That was never ending. That was fun. I actually helped with some of that. You did. That's did. never ending. Um, yeah, so that's it for the calendar. Okay. Go ahead. The one thing I want to say before we get mm -hmm. sidetracked. Okay, for all of you who are watching this video, I'm going to put it down in the description as well. Sunday, February 5th at 9.30 Eastern Standard Time. Mm -hmm. We're going to make an attempt. <laughs> I say attempt because, you know. You've met us. We've not done it before. Yeah. So, yeah. We're going to make an attempt to do a YouTube live video. Yeah. I know. No bloopers. No bloopers that day. Oh, they man. stay in. I'm in trouble. Um, because... right. We're talking to our friends. It doesn't matter. Absolutely. So um, the live video is going to talk about Wild and Wooly. Which is the following weekend. Which is the following weekend. All the vendors that are going to be there. We're so excited. We're going to show you some of the things that we're each taking to Wild and mm -hmm. Wooly. Oh. You mean I have to figure it out by then? Oh. <laughs> this is a chore every year. You have no idea. It like, it's really... pen and paper, and I'm like, okay, wait, look up what you took last year. Well, I took this, and I took this, well, but this didn't sell. But and... the stuff that I took last year that I would love to take again this year, they've discontinued, and I have none. Which one? Nordic Tapestry. Oh. That made me so mad. But that's okay. We'll find something I else that's popular stuff. and cool. We'll take other stuff. I love your new tweed stuff. Yeah. That's we'll really cute. Out. But yeah, so we'll show you what we're taking. We'll talk about what happens that day. Um, for those of you that are local, mark that on your calendar, February 11th. Put it on your date. 11 on to your, 4. Your, put, it on there. put it on your calendar. 11 to 4 on February 11th. And we will be closed here in store. It's going to be a big old sign. It says, sorry, not here at Wild and Wooly. Go find us at the fairgrounds. Find us at the fairgrounds. Yep. Big sign. So, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. We just want to tell you we're going to try to do the live Facebook, uh, live YouTube. And I'll apologize ahead of time. We will not probably be responding to comments because cameraman Bob mm -hmm. is going to do the filming. Um, but pop in anyway and love us to death. Yeah. Those little hurt dudes and the smiley faces, we love them. I know. And maybe someday we'll get good enough to where we know how to comment while we're doing this. But again, still kind of new. Still new. But you know what? It's been over a year, so we're getting better at it. We we're are. getting good. We are. We're learning technology. We are. All right. All right. Well, we got to go because we got to film the, the how-to. How -to. It's going to be so great. It's going to be fun. She worked really, really hard to make sure she had her pieces ready for this. I did. She's like, wait, when are we doing this? Oh, I got to finish that other one. I actually had to <laughs> work one yesterday. <laughs> I saw. Yep. I wasn't commenting. I was being well, I'm nice. I'm ready to go. Yep. So again, like us on Facebook on the Blue mm -hmm. Fiber Tree. Share it with your friends. Tell them all about our YouTube channel. Um, tell them we do nifty neat drawings every now and then. Yeah. Sweet Pea Sid. I want to thank you so much. She did a whole little five-minute live video on YouTube talking about the yarn she won. Yeah. And then talking about the blue, blue fiber, fiber tree. tree. It was great. I was like, 
We're on somebody else's thing. It was fun. I watched it yesterday. I'm like, oh, yeah. Hi. I went and I subscribed. I was like, oh, we have to subscribe. Yeah, to I now. subscribed too. So we, you know, <laughs> you got two more followers, sweepy. Yep. All right. You guys have a great day. Um, and stay tuned. We're going to do part two of the weaving. Absolutely. And then we'll see you again live on the 5th, yep. 930 Eastern Standard Time. Okay. Have a great day. Yep. Bye. <sighs> okay. How long was that? 20 minutes. Okay. So we are going to continue with warping and how to weave on a rigid head over loom. So we've already done the warping process and we are at that same point where you are ready to start weaving. And I'm going to show you how to start the process. And then we're also going to show you how to take it off when you're done. So I have the finished one as well so that you can, this will be the rest of this, the thing. Okay. So the first thing you're going to do is you to make sure you're comfortable in your chair, you have the right tension that you need. And the first thing you need to do is to start your sheds with either waste yarn, because you can use waste yarn for this as well, or the cardboard sticks that they give you, the warping sticks. And we're just going to use the warping sticks for right now. I personally always start in the down position. That's me. All right, so I'm going to go down. And I'm going to slide one cardboard piece in and pull it all the way down to the knot. You do not need to beat this. Up. The second one, like this, down, and now we're ready to go. Basically what this does is it helps to take away some of that spread when you first tie on you have wider places and you want to get it really so that it's almost back to normal like this here there's still some width here but we're going to be okay with that in the beginning it'll work its way out so in the down position i have my shuttle and for me i always start right to left because if I start the same way every time, I know that if my shuttle is on the right, my reed needs to be in the down position. And if my yarn and shuttle are on the left, my reed needs to be in the up position. It's just a way for me to know. Worst case scenario, if you have it in the wrong position, you're going to unweave one row. No biggie. You I'm just, good at that. You just put it back through. It's okay? Chris piping in, guys, every yeah, now and then. Yeah, Chris. So here we go. So we're going to go in and we're going to leave ourselves a tail halfway across, whatever, because I'm going to show you how to weave this in as you go so that you don't have to go back later and use a tapestry needle to weave stuff in. So here we are across. We're going to pull this down and we're going to gently pull this until it's straight. I'm not making a rug. If you're making... <laughs> If you're making fabric, it's a kiss, okay? You just want to bring it until everybody's lined up. Somehow I missed that in my very first rigid you heddle class. Mine, my, my little scarf was a rug scarf. So the next thing you're going to do is you're going to put it in the up position. You're going to pass it through. So now this here is the thing. You're going to learn some things here. So if you take this and you pull on your yarn and you put your finger underneath and make sure that that warp thread is in line with how, where it comes out of the slot. And then you take your other hand and you just gently pull until it lays there. You don't want to do this. You're going to have some issues. So we're going to pull this back out. Yeah, you'll get those wavy edges yes. if you do that. Yes. So the, the point is to do it as gently as possible. Just lay it there and at a bit of an angle bring this down. If you tip the top back, go like this. You can actually see when it's lined up and then you stop and then we go back down and then we go from the other side and we're going to put this in. And same thing over here. You're going to hold this 
with your finger until it just touches that and even tug back just a little bit so that everybody's lined up you don't want to pull it tight i cannot stress how important it is not to pull it tight and then just till it lines up and then up now beauty of the ashford looms is if you're working on a table there are these notches at the back of the loom that actually go on the edge of your table it sets it at an angle so you're looking down on your work it doesn't hurt your shoulders you're now not doing this you're right here it's better, better body motion. position absolutely feet planted on the floor you know <laughs> it's in a position yeah. where you don't hurt your hips you don't hurt your knees you know eventually everybody ends up on their toes but you don't need to do that just relax sit where it's nice and comfortable so now at this point i can lay this in my lap tug on that edge go like that let it go bring it down and down and awesome. once you get into a rhythm and i'm next to the table this is the 16 inch i'm not used to using the 16 inch typically i use the 10 but i have a specific use for this piece when it comes off and i needed the width so there you go now this can is your weaving i want to ask a question sure so when some people do what you're doing right now and they go through mm -hmm. instead of that angle mm -hmm. <clears throat> excuse me they bubble rainbow yeah why it's do they rainbow same thing so you have to give extra yarn if you pull it flat like this your yarn has nowhere to go yarn and your warp your warp threads are going to do this kind of thing and your yarn has to be able to do this oh between your warp in between okay. the warp threads so you have to give it room to move if that makes sense okay and if you don't give that extra um you're gonna bring it pulls your piece, the piece in. in you're gonna actually have a denser fabric if that's okay. what you're going for fine but if you're making something that needs to be drapey you can't do that you also have to understand too when you're weaving you're weaving under tension your warp is tensioned and so you're going to have space so come in here can you see they're not exactly all the way up against each other there's some space mm -hmm. when you release this off of the loom it's gonna pull oh, the tension is okay. going to release yep. this way and this way a little bit it's going to happen you can't get away from it and those gaps fill in those when gaps it does fill the... in okay so you have to understand trying to get it so that the threads are right next to either each other where you want it to be when it's done you're going to make it thicker than what it really is that was my problem when i first started yeah yeah it's hard to realize that that's the situation but okay. that's the way it is and then when you're doing your when you're weaving mm -hmm. can you use anything for your with? for your weft so are there rules in weaving when you're doing the weft which is the left to right actually weaving this here's the warp warp is important it's under tension it can't stretch <laughs> but when you're going back and forth this direction for mm -hmm. the weft you can use anything you want it okay. doesn't matter okay because it's not under tension okay it's not gonna break just wanted to know yeah you can use and roving materials does the yarn or whatever you're using to weave with back and forth for your weft does it matter with how what you've got warped with like what size okay. reed you used or yeah, anything like so that if you're doing a really fat yarn or say you're using a fabric because you did that that one i time. did we used uh batiks yep materials that you had stripped down you need to give more space between the warp threads in order for that to have a place to go yeah. so i think we went to a five we went we? to a five yep so all that means instead of seven and a half warp threads per inch we used something that had five warp threads okay. per inch and it gave more space in between okay. now ashford goes all the way down to 2.5 yeah stitches per inch so if you're using roving or thicker materials that gives more space now 
that doesn't need to mean that you need to use a chunky yarn in your warp you can use the thinner even like this okay this is size 10 crochet thread okay okay size 10 thread it's just how far apart it's spaced it's how far apart it is okay. and what you're going to weave with okay. so there are things that you need to take into consideration for when you are making a project okay um and those are things that we talk about when we're teaching okay 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 sorry so now, was just curious yeah um so now what we need to do I'll move this out of the way so you kind of got an idea on that i do want to touch on one thing here that i couldn't touch on there yeah all right when you get to a point up by the reed and your um shuttle's not going to go through anymore you need to advance your project to advance your project, you put your hand back here and you gently, it's a small movement because what it does is it releases pressure off of this here so that you can easily click it back. If you leave it like that and it's under tension, it's harder to get it <laughs> off. Plus, your hand also has control so it doesn't go flying. Okay. Release this, take the front one, and you wind on until your fabric is like right about here, this area, okay. um, because your shuttle can go up to that point. And then you lock this, re-engage is the word I was looking for. And then you just gently tension again with this one, not this one, until you have where you want to be, and then you can continue weaving. Okay. Okay? So now... I work this way. <laughs> I work this way so you can actually film it. Yeah. Scissors. All right. So now I'm done. All right. So now I need to get this off of here. So I do this pretty quickly. You cut the first one, cut the next two. Cut behind the reed. You're cutting off of the back beam. Excuse me. I do everything in fours. So the first four threads. I just do a half knot, slip knot, bullion knot, whatever you want to call it. Tighten it. Do the next two. So this is the extra piece. You're always going to have one extra because your first piece that you tied on was a single thread, yarn, whatever. And if you hold the knot and pull and then hold the fabric and pull, if you do this, you're going to pull your warp thread. You don't want to pull your warp thread. I really yes. like the colors in that one. Don't you like that? That's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. It's, um, so this is actually Lion Brand suede, but it really feels like a chenille. It does feel like a chenille. That's why I kept looking at it. I'm like, huh. And then I had this blue cotton that I used. Have a lot of this blue cotton <laughs> for whatever reason looks really good with that yeah so as you see this is not a it's not it's not that it's not a quick process but it's not that slow either and then if you're making a scarf you've got fringe there is another technique that we will show later um there's this thing called hem stitching and you have to decide that you're going to do hem stitch at the beginning of your project because you need to do the hem stitch in the beginning at the front of your project before you actually start advancing. I still struggle with the hem stitch. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. It's just something that doesn't. You know, once you practice it, it's that thing that's like, oh, this is really fast. It's easy. And if you don't want fringe on a project, that's the thing to do. So a lot of people are making tea towels or placemats and they don't want any fringe. They'll do the hem stitch at the beginning and the end. So you know what I've done? Mm -hmm. Is I've just made sure that I weave extra fabric mm -hmm. and then I go visit my sewing machine mm -hmm. and I, and I, you know, cut off my fringe yep. and then fold it over and sew because um, me and that hem stitch again. Yeah. I just feel like I do it wrong every single time I do it. I just haven't got confident with it yet. Right. And me... 
And I like to sew, so I'm going to do the other thing. Right. Now, we did have, so when you're doing placemats and tea towels and things like that, you can actually work for more than one at a time. Yep. And then you can, it's like three or four that you can get on your loom. And you do that hem stitch in between each one, and you leave a space, and you keep on going. Well, Jim actually was making placemats. And so he brought in to show me what he had done, and he hadn't cut them apart yet. Well, where he did the hem stitch and left space in between the cut, it was a great detail. Oh, it looked like that floating warp. Yes. Yeah, so what he did was he decided to leave that as a table runner. Oh, that's so funny. And then make placemats again. That's perfect. <laughs> it was because everybody's like, ooh, how do you do that? It was so pretty. Yeah, it was. It was really nice. Okay, so you should end with four. Um, me, I'm just, it's one of those things I always make sure everything is divisible by four so it ends right. Sometimes that just doesn't happen. So that's how you do that end. Okay, you ready? And then you get the reveal. You unloosen this and you pull. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, that's so pretty. I made that long. You did. All right, then you flip it up. Now, real quick, right here at the beginning, mm -hmm. she used excess yarn instead of the sticks. Correct. So this is that other thing that you can do because then when you use a thick yarn, and as you can see, I doubled it. I just held it doubled. Um, you actually reduce the spacing quicker. Okay. So... You need to pull this out. Now, if these were, see how I'm just pulling? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Comes right out. If um, I had the warp sticks in there, you have to remove the warp sticks before you can finish okay. this process. So now, because we tied on using the bow tie knots, it just unties. And it's already in fours because I did it that way. Can yep. you see? Are my hands in the way? Come around this way. Yeah, come around this way. So again, listen, I'm not cameraman Bob here. No, but this is, it's not a slow process. It really doesn't take that much time. And people are like, oh, now I got to get it off of there. Well, this is easy to get off of there. They're, they're bows. Just undo the bow. You don't have to count. You don't have to cut anything. And I do it the exact same overhand knot that I did at the other end and that's it so it's really easy to work on a rigid huddle and I hope these videos are something that you can use after you've taken a workshop or if you have a question I've heard people already have gone back to that <laughs> first one you did <laughs> they have they have um, which is nice because it's exactly the way that I teach it. It's exactly the way that Ashford has it in the instructional books that come with the looms. Um, so it's a great, it's a great backup. Oh, absolutely. Um, so you can, you know, share and go, oh, I forgot how, she's not open. Well, I need to find that video. Well, it's right here for you to find. Absolutely. Yep. So there you go. Um, can you think of anything else I may have left out? Hmm. Um, so when you're done with this piece and you mm -hmm. take it off, is there anything that you're going to do to this piece so that it okay, so fluffs me, and all yeah. that stuff? So me personally, nah. Oh, I, okay. I don't. But okay. what you should do, the next step that <laughs> you should do... So see this? This is where I had to tie on the next one because I ran out of the one skein. Okay. I'll just leave it in there. Comes part of the fringe. Um, so what you should do is you should you should soak it in um, eucalyn is a recommended uh, no rinse wash. Um, like the fiber wash. Yeah. Is that what that is? Okay. Um, well, no, eucalyn's a little bit different. Is it? Yeah. Okay. With the fiber wash is just the soap, and then you have to rinse it and then use the rinse okay. to condition it. Um, the eucalyn kind of does it all at once, and you don't have to rinse uh, it. There's no soap residue. Um, wow. Soak okay. it in a bowl of room temperature water. Learn something new every day. Yeah. Put a little bit in. Doesn't take a lot. 
um, let your piece set for 30 to 45 minutes. Let it absorb as much water as possible um, in order for those fibers to bloom. What else you need to do is when after it's soaked, um, gently squeeze, do not wring it or twist or any other um, mangling, just gently squeeze the water out. Roll it in a big absorbent towel and then um, lay it flat to dry. Okay. And that's that. And that'll help it bloom? That's that blocking process. Okay. And look at this. That's awesome. I got to back up. That's really long. I did make it long, but look at this. Oh, Janine, I love that. Thank you for making that for me. <laughs> Isn't this cool? Oh. Uh, now the fringe can be trimmed to be the same length. You can braid them, you can yep. fringe twist them, anything that you want. Rotary cutters are a great tool for that. Absolutely. <laughs> we love rotary tools yep. and the mats. They help you get your fringe straight. So there you go. Very nice. Yay. All right, Miss Janine, so, thank yes. you so, so much. Yeah, so this is how you finish your rigid huddle weaving. Um, like and share. Absolutely. Um, let your friends know that you saw the videos up on the YouTube video channel of the Blue Fiber Tree. And you know you can find all these workshops on the website of longtailknits.com. Absolutely. Facebook page Longtail Knits and under the events tab you can get all that information. So I hope you enjoyed the process as much as we did. Happy rigid heddling. <laughs> heddling. Heddling. <laughs> I didn't know how to say that. Happy, I can't even say it again. Happy, uh, happy, happy weaving, people. Yes, happy weaving. All right, so have a great day. Hope this works. And if you have any questions at all, you know how to get a hold of me. Bye. Bye. <laughs>